So the 1980s were an absolutely insane time for Formula One race cars. Cars were getting fast, and I mean scary fast. Some cars had up to 1,400 horsepower. So what we're doing today is building ourselves the best F1 car of all time. I mean, it's probably not going to be as fast as a modern F1 car, but it's going to be cooler in every way. It's going to sound amazing. It's going to have a screaming V12 that revs to 12,000 RPM. What's up, guys? I'm Rai, and welcome back to some automation and BeamNG Drive. So we are building a Formula One race car from the 1980s. We are actually using the 1993 model year. And I'll tell you why in a little bit, but this is going to be a 1988 sort of year F1 car. So it's the very last year of naturally aspirated and turbocharged engines together before they are banned for quite a long time. So before we continue, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, BuildBox. BuildBox is a game development software that requires absolutely zero coding or design experience. With BuildBox, you can easily create, build, preview, and publish a variety of different game genres like arcade games, card games, shooters, and more. Some of my personal favorite games using BuildBox are games like Color Switch, Track to Rush, and The Game. BuildBox also has a variety of features like the BuildBox Shop, which is an asset store that has tons of free and premium assets. From 2D to 3D to UI elements and more, everything you possibly could need is there. The asset library itself is all drag and drop with tons of preset animations and logic to help bring your game to life, saving you tons of time in the development process. If you guys want to go for a quicker route, there are pre-made game templates for a variety of styles and genres, which you can then customize into your own specialized game. And lastly, there's a feature called Game Wizard, which is a tool you could use to step-by-step -step make your game in 30 seconds or less. Literally, in 30 seconds, I have a functioning game, which I can then customize to my heart's desire. Like, this game is literally a game I made. I'm not even joking, guys. I made this in 30 seconds. BuildBox is totally free and super easy to use. There's two main versions to suit your needs. There's a classic version, which is the easier version, and it's meant for more of 2D style games. There's also BuildBox 3, which allows you to make both 2D and 3D games. It's the newer, more updated version. Again, both are absolutely free, but if you want to publish your game on the Google Play Store or App Store, you do need to subscribe to the Plus or Pro plans, which honestly is pretty cheap considering this does all the heavy lifting for you. So obviously, guys, if you have any interest in making games at all, whether it's car games, whether it's a card game, a shooter game, etc., BuildBox is the platform for you. Seriously, guys, I'll leave a link in the description. Check it out below. Again, thank you so much to BuildBox for sponsoring this video. But now, back to the build. So we're actually making a car to compete against Phil 186's 1988 Formula 1 race car, which has a turbocharged 1.5 liter V8. And we're going to beat that. We're going to make the best Formula 1 race car of all time. And I'm telling you, it's going to sound better than anything else. It's going to look cooler. It's going to drive better. It's not going to be faster than the new ones, but it's going to be cooler in every other way. So first things first, we need to choose the body. And we're, we're going to use the same body that Philbin used, which is his own mod body. It's based off an MP4 slash 4. I think it's a McLaren, so it's based off that. And we're going to give it our own little twist. It's going to be a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, Formula 1 race car with a manual gearbox, obviously, and all the bells and whistles. So, carbon fiber, monocoque, carbon fiber. This is a Formula 1 race car. His car used carbon fiber. Carbon fiber was used in some F1 cars in the 80s, etc. So we're going to use that as well. Mid-mounted, longitudinal, pushrod front, and pushrod in the rear. Engine. We're going to call this the um, the Phil Beater 86. That's that's his name. The Phil Beater 86. It's fine. Engine. Naturally aspirated 60 degree V12. High-end ALSI and 5-valve technology, which is going to be, of course, the best of the best. So exactly a 3.5 liter V12 plus 15 quality there as well. It's going to be, of course, the best of the best. No harmonic, no, we'll need a harmonic damper, I think. A very light balancing mass, VVT all cams, 12,000 red line. We're going to give it plus 15 quality on everything for now. We'll give it a twin fuel injection multi-point setup, race intake. We will give it pretty fancy everything, basically. So everything kind of explodes right now. That's, that's going to be fixed. Higher springs and lifters, higher cam profile. So it still kind of dies. We'll give it a balancing shaft. We'll give it a harmonic damper because it, it kind of needs it, to be honest. 650 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque. Not bad right off the bat. It's actually honestly kind of where we want. I think the car that he made has about 670. I think that was the goal was 670. So before we actually get into too much stuff, let's give this thing a five-speed manual. Let's give it a high top speed for now. Viscous LSD. No, no LSD. Open diff. Open diff is what, what he had. Semi-slicks though, we're going to go for 
290s in the front and we'll go for 395s in the rear and 13 inch wheels magnesium we'll go for alloys though i'm not sure what exactly he used there we'll go for the biggest brakes possible these brakes are still gonna be kind of trash but that's okay race diffuser ice quality one seat with no entertainment because it's it's literally a formula one race car guys i think cars mostly used hydraulic power steering we're actually going to use manual power steering because yeah because i said so we're going to give it abs though because that's that's kind of a needed safety thing and just, we'll give it negative 15 safety because we need this thing to be very light look at that semi-active sway bar as well we'll give it a race tune for now for suspension so right off the bat 690 horsepower with a five-speed manual gearbox zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.1 not bad it's got pretty good cornering g's as well it's actually pretty low roll angle so overall it's a decent start this thing needs arrow it needs a lot of arrow. It needs wings, it needs diffusers, spoilers, all of that fun jazz to make this thing handle absolutely insanely. Top speed right now is 404. That'll be lower on later. It does have issues with wheel spin and brake fade, but those are things that are going to be hard to avoid um, because this thing is so fast and we are limited to just quite small brakes. So the brakes really aren't that great. I mean, we have lots of power, just they are going to fade reasonably quick. What if we give it brake airflow? I think that'll be fine. So what we're going to do is use the advanced trim settings button here. And we're going to go ahead and actually modify things. Um, so we're going to hide the chassis. So now we can turn on the chassis and it's gone. We're going to go ahead and offset the body, uh, the wheels at least quite a bit. Because you can see here they actually go into it. Let's go ahead, offset that. And let's go ahead and I think we need, we need to lower the body. So it is tweaked pretty well. The wheels and tires are looking pretty pretty mean if i do say so myself i think the fronts are actually maybe too big i'm not exactly sure what front tires phil is using but i'm gonna double check right away i also want to point out that this car if it was to be sold new in 1993 it would sell exactly and i do want to mention that this car is not going to be designed the same way the mp4 slash 4 was designed uh the front sort of wing diffuser thing i, I don't actually know what this is called the front piece is going to extend past the front wheels because i think that looks cool so I do think the basics of the car are pretty much done. We do need to design it. We do need to add the wings and adjust the downforce because right now, obviously, it makes zero downforce. Uh, also, it does make zero downforce, which is not ideal, but we'll fix that in a time elapse. So if we can lower the weight, that'd be pretty cool. Um, and of course, get the car just to be better in general because we want to beat Phil as badly as possible. So what we're going to do is design the car in a time lapse. I'm going to engineer the car, tweak the car. Then we'll hop into BMG Drive and see how insane this race car is. So sit back, relax, guys, and of course, enjoy. So we are starting the build for my 1980s Formula F1 race car. The first thing I'm doing is making my front sort of wing splitter kind of thing work properly, as well as the rear splitter. So I finally get them both to sort of function and look half decent. Then I go ahead and retune the car just a bit more, uh, setting up the suspension at uh, the height of the car. And make sure the car is actually going to perform properly in beam and g drives i add mirrors i add some scoops i add some ducks i do start working on the color scheme which i start off with a yellow and black scheme but i do later change that because i just don't like it to a white and black scheme so a sort of a zebra print kind of scheme making a rather simple interior because this car does not need to be crazy detailed it's literally just a race car so it's got pedals it's got a seat it's got a steering wheel and a display adding a rear diffuser adding a bit more rear spoilers to the car the rear exhaust, the rear cutouts for the exhaust, things like that as well. Now going ahead and naming the car MP20 for 20,000 RPM, but I changed that later to MP12. Uh, adding again more to the front end, the front sword front splitter, as well as finally adding all the branding, the decals, the logos, everything else you want on the car. So starting off with the Dunlap as our main brand, they are our tire company and they are our main sponsor. We have the 69 number, nice on the car itself. Adding some oil and gas companies in the car, adding some other platforms like social media and things like that on the car itself, adding Mooters on the back, which is a cow themed Hooters. And in front of us is the 1988 Maven M12 P. So finally, we are in BMG Drive with the Maven M12P. It is Maven's newest, most exciting race car. The nose looks a little bit 
weirdly dented. I'm actually not sure what that is, but it's fine. It's fine. The car is good to go. It is insanely fast on a track, but before we hop into an actual track, I want to show you guys what this thing can do on the quarter mile. So it's got around 700 horsepower and it weighs what, like 14, 1500 pounds. So it's not incredibly heavy. It's actually insanely light. Car is ready. Almost pulls the wheelie. Zero to 62 in 1.4 seconds on a prep surface, which is insane. Quarter mile in 8.6 seconds, which is also absolutely insane. 8.6 seconds in the quarter mile. So I hopped into the automation test track because I thought it's a good sort of middle ground for an F1 racetrack. And sort of just a fun track that everyone knows and loves. So this is the automation test track, full race circuit. Uh, this is the M12P. P standing for prototype, obviously. And we're going to see what kind of lap time we can get. I've done some preliminary testing and the numbers are pretty good. It's my best ever, actually, by a, a wide margin. So we'll see. So we're going to hop here. We're going to turn off the action control, change to realistic mode. And just launch it in first gear. Absolutely straight in the tires. Braking here. And into first gear in the first corner. So off to a terrible start. Probably because I'm talking and driving at the same time. Okay, try number two, guys. I'm gonna focus a little more. <laughs> if I can't beat my record right now, I'm gonna cry. I need to beat my record is what I need to do. So it has a touch of oversteer at low speeds, but it's nothing we can't manage. We're gonna break here, going into first, even in this corner. That manual transmission is kind of hampering our performance because we just can't really quite accelerate as fast as we want or shift as fast as we want. But it's not bad. I'm not sure if Phil actually modified his shift times for his manual transmission, but like, oh, it's fine. Top speed, we can't really get much more over 176, I think. Yeah, so we'll stay in fourth gear. Fifth gear is kind of useless right now. We are scraping on the ground a little bit. You can see the sparks. So we'll stay in fourth gear, about 175 miles an hour, which is pretty quick. We're gonna break right here. The third, stay in third. Lots of downforce at high speeds, so we can take the corner quite fast. We're gonna break here. And into fourth, we're good. This thing is scary fast. Probably gonna stay in third there, but we're gonna floor in seconds. Almost lost it out there. Probably accelerated a bit too much. We're okay though. We're gonna break here. Taking it very tight. Not wide at all. That's okay. It is definitely sketchy sometimes, but a very respectable time of 141.5 on the test track, which is pretty much my best time at 141.4 for my testing. I'm certain we can break the 140 barrier on this car. I am not the best driver. Uh, I don't actually have a good, there's a really good first person on this car though. So if we go to reach right here and just change the cameras, we get this camera, which we can't move. This camera, which we can't move for some reason. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but like, that sounds really weird, actually. I was going to make a 20,000 RPM version of this thing, but it just didn't work quite right. And it was just too kind of jank. Uh, the revs didn't make enough sense. So I decided to keep it at a reasonable 12,000 RPM. I know, reasonable, crazy, right? I think lastly, we'll hop into the jump, Rita, and we'll just see how far this thing jumps. So lastly, we are at the jump arena again. So this is going to be a challenge. I'm calling on Filmin 86. I want to race your MP4 slash 4 McLaren with my M12P Maven race car. So I want to see who makes the best race cars. I think it's me, guys. So we're going to hop. So we're going to jump this car at just full speed and just see what we can do, honestly. Because at this point, why not? This is a ton of fun to build. Oh, wish we're going a little. Okay, we're, we're going. Okay. That went pretty much exactly how I thought it would go. Tip number two, I don't know how we couldn't jump this car. But yeah, this car was a lot of fun to build because it's just so insane. It handles very good, but it is a, a slightly difficult car to drive. We should have floored here as fast as we can. Wow, that was... That was a landing. Can we actually land this thing? Oh my gosh, please. Oh, oh, are we good? Are we good? Uh, oh, we're good. 
<laughs> the landing, we stuck the landing because it's, it's dark. Oh, we're good. Oh, no. <laughs> they were not good. They were not good at all. Uh, this thing is a fun car. But let me know let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see me versus Philwin in an actual F1 style race because I think I would kick his butt. Again, before we finish off, I want to give another huge shout out to Buildbox for sponsoring this video. If you guys have any interest in game development at all, Buildbox is a great tool to help you not only learn, but how to develop and publish your own games. Again, link will be in the description and pinned comment below. Uh, this chassis is a little flexible though, I'd say, but you know what? It's, uh, it's fine. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you next time.